Hello and welcome everyone. In this podcast we're going to talk about the chromosome theory of inheritance. We previously have uh, talked about meiosis and over the last few podcasts we talked about Mendel's two laws. Mendel didn't know what a chromosome was, what DNA was, or what genes were, what genetic material was. He just was looking at P's and looking at traits, and he was able to make these two laws, which have held up very well throughout the past, say, 150 years. But we now know about meiosis, and we can now bring these two ideas together. Because even though Mendel was looking at these traits of, say, round and yellow, we now know it's not these just random genes floating around in a cell. We know that these genes within the cell are on chromosomes. So we have an R here. And then maybe we have another homologous pair that has the Y on it. So we now under can, can explain these laws of segregation and independent assortment thinking about meiosis. And that's what we want to do. So let's first look at Mendel's law of segregation. In Mendel's law of segregation, it is stated that the two alleles of, of a single gene segregate away from each other during gamete formation. And so we know if we take our cell here and we take our homologous chromosomes that have gone through S phase, so we're in mitosis, meiosis now, and we know these genes have, say, big A on it, big A. We know that as they go through meiosis 1 that they're going to pull away from each other. And over here, you're going to have the big A gene on each of the sister chromatids. And over here, you're going to have the little a gene. And then, of course, as you go through meiosis 2, so this is meiosis 1, they pull apart from each other, and we end up with 50% of our gametes with big A and 50% of our gametes with little a. Again, Mendel made these predictions. He just didn't know that the, the mechanism for it. We know the mechanism now is that the genes that he was, was observing through the traits are actually on these chromosomes. And that's how they're able to segregate the way he... Now let's look at his law of independent assortment. We need to look at two different genes. Big A and Big A on this homologous chromosome. And the other one we can have little a and little a. And then we can have the other homologous chromosomes. And we'll call it big B and big B. And this law says that the two different genes will enter into the gametes with equal probability. And so through meiosis 1 and 2, let's see what we get. So over here we know that we're going to get one of these. Big A and big A. And it's just as likely to get the big B uh, chromosomes as it is to get the little b. If you remember, this is one of the areas during anaphase 1 that we said we generate diversity. So let's go ahead and put our big A here again. And this time let's have this chromosome assort with it. The little b. It's completely random which one it's going to get, but both are equally probable. And likewise here. We can't forget about little a. It can assort with either big B or little b. Completely random. This is where independent assortment is explained. Of course, now these will go on to make two cells each where we just pull the sister chromatids apart. And I'm not going to draw all of those, just in the interest of time. You can do that. But essentially it's going to be big A, big B, big A, big B, big A, little B here, little A, big B here, and so forth. Because meiosis 2 is just pulling the sister chromatids apart. This is where independent assortment is explained. How big A is just as likely to get big B in the gamete with it, or big A can get little b, equally probable events. So with the blending of meiosis and 
Mendel's laws of segregation and independent assortment, other scientists got involved and ultimately we came up with this chromosomal theory of inheritance. And these are its five principles. And this, this theory still holds up and, um, and keeps expanding as more knowledge comes in. But let's go over these five principles real quick. The first is that chromosomes contain the genetic material of inheritance. We know from previous uh, lectures that DNA is in the chromosomes and that the genes are within the DNA. And so the chromosomes are this, this vehicle that carries out the transfer of inheritance. Chromosomes are replicated and passed on to the next generation. We know, as we've talked about previously, that chromosomes are copied during replication and that they, as the cell divides, a copy of that chromosome moves on to the next cell. It also applies to reproduction and that is in the sense of making uh, copies of the chromosomes that go into the gametes. The third principle, eukaryotes have two homolog homologous chromosomes, one from each parent. Not saying they only have two chromosomes, they can have more than two chromosomes, but for every chromosome they have, they have a homologous pair with it. Fourth, chromosomes segregate independently during meiosis. So as the gametes are made from that diploid cell and they start to segregate into the gametes, they segregate away from each other and independently into the gametes. And the last one is that each parent gives one set of chromosomes to the offspring. So of the homologous pairs we have, of every one of our chromosomes, one comes from each of our parents. Now, how did they come up with this, the, the, all the scientists that were involved in, this, in establishing this chromosome theory of inheritance? Well, there are lots, but I want you to know a few of them. The first is Mendel. And I don't think we need to say anything else about Mendel. We've talked about him quite a bit, but certainly know his role in establishing those two laws. Next was Wiseman, and we also have talked about him. He was the one that cut off the mice's tails to show that, um, to, to establish the germplasm theory of, of inheritance and um, to disprove the inheritance of acquired traits. The third person I want you to know is Fleming. We haven't talked about Fleming, so let's just say one quick thing about him. He was the one that discovered chromosomes. He did much more than this, but that's what I want you to know about Fleming's, that he discovered chromosomes. The next group are a group of three scientists, De Vries, Corins, and Shermack. What they contributed to was they, they rediscovered Mendel's work. If they had not rediscovered his work um, and given him credit for it, A, we wouldn't know him as the father of genetics, we may never have found his work, but um, much of his contributions um, would, would, were necessary to understand what we see in inheritance. Okay, let's continue this list on a separate board. And the next person I want to talk about is Bovary. And what Bovary did was he studied sea ur urchins. And in his studies, he learned that if you remove a chromosome, that development is abnormal. Now, to you and I, this sounds fairly reasonable, but at this time, remember, they didn't appreciate that the chromosomes contained the genetic material. The next person is uh, Sutton, Walter Sutton. And he did a, a lot, lot of great work, but his contribution that I, that I want you to remember is that um, Sutton was able to show that genes are carried on chromosomes. Okay. This next person I want you to know is one of my favorite geneticists, Thomas Hunt Morgan. What I want you to know about Morgan is a, a few things. One, he's often thought of as the 20th century Mendel. He was able to show that traits are linked to chromosomes. 
Hey, but his colleagues also established linkage. That genes, some genes, are linked on the same chromosome. In fact, there's an interesting connection to um, the, the biology department at CMU and this story. He was also the first to win a Nobel Prize in genetics. So that's, that's an interesting fact about him. The next person is Eleanor Carruthers. And she was able to show that the homolog pairs of chromosomes assort independently. And the last person I want you to know is Calvin Bridges. And he worked a lot with chromosomal abnormalities, but he was uh, one of the first to show the concept of non-disjunction. So really showing this link between a chromosome and its ability to properly segregate. If that gets messed up, then that can lead to consequences to the organism. All right, that's all I have on this for this podcast. In this podcast, we uh, talked about how we linked meiosis with Mendel's findings, and then we talked about the chromosome theory of inheritance, and then we talked about these nine scientists that played a, a pivotal role in establishing the principles of that chromosome theory of inheritance. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I'll see you in class. Bye.